Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be giving you some useful tips and tricks to help improve your FPS. It's been a while since I made an FPS boost guide. You guys know I try to make one every single season, so I guess here is the new one for Chapter 2 Season 8. What I'm going to do is cover all the major tweaks and optimization tips that you can use to improve your FPS in-game. This will include the best NVIDIA settings, Windows 10 and 11 tricks, as well as in-game Fortnite options that you really need to take advantage of. Additionally, there should be timestamps integrated into the video in case you want to skip around or maybe just go back to a certain part. So if you're one of those people, feel free to move around. Thus, make sure to drop a like if this video helps out your FPS, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so to begin, we're going to click on this bad boy right here, your GeForce Experience application. Everyone with an NVIDIA driver should have this. It basically has all the different applications and games you play. Where I'm going to go is to the Drivers tab on the top. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to update my drivers. In order to actually do that, you just click Check for Updates, and that will show you the latest GeForce Game Ready driver. I'm not even on the latest one. This one came out two days ago. You can see today is the 20th. Me and myself, I'm usually on either the latest driver, which I'm gonna download. You can see I'm downloading it. I don't think I'm gonna install it because I kind of want to record this video. But for those of you who get hitches or maybe your game just does not feel good on the latest game ready driver, I'm gonna show you guys how to get old ones, specifically the best one I've heard of from actual PC tweakers. Like I said, I would normally do express installation. It would just install it and boom, I'm on the latest graphics driver. What I'm gonna do in instead is type in device manager, bring up this bad boy from my control panel, and basically what I'm showing you right now is how to uninstall your current graphics driver and how to replace it with an older one. What you're going to be looking for right here is your graphics card. It is under display adapters, so you can see right there. Then Nvidia GeForce RTX 3090 comes up. Yours will be whichever graphics card you have. I'm going to right click, press properties, go on the top tab over to driver, and here is where I would uninstall uninstall the device. Once you uninstall this, nothing is really going to happen to your PC. It might go to 60 hertz, but basically, you uninstalled your current driver, and you're gonna have to download a new one. So to get the newest one, you guys can see I have gone incognito. Don't ask why. I'm basically gonna type in advanced NVIDIA driver search, and this is the page you are given. What I'm gonna do is put in my specific graphics card. You guys probably have a similar one if you're on NVIDIA. Not like 3090, but you guys know either 20 series, 16 series, 10 series. I have my 3090 in and I'm gonna look up recommended. Why I did recommended is because this is going to give us the one that I have personally heard is the best. As you can see, the recommended start in September. I think I'm on this one. Let me actually check which one am I on. Yeah, I'm on 47.12. That one has worked really, really well for me, but the one that Adam X recommends and a lot of other tweakers is this one over here. Four 57.30. It was released a year ago, November 9th, 2020, but it's really, really, really good. So what you're gonna do, remember, this is under the recommended slash certified ones. You're just gonna click on the actual name. It should be green. And then you're just gonna download it. Let's go! I'm not actually going to install this. I guess I'll run it, but I won't install it. This is what it looks like, the actual driver. This is the package. I'm gonna cancel it just because I already have the driver I want, but just make sure if you do not like the current GeForce driver, you will see the newest one at the top available. Make sure you go to Device Manager and actually uninstall your current one. That way you do not put the old one over your current one. You actually go and clean uninstall. That way we could go and fool around in the NVIDIA control panel. This is where all the great settings are. I did not want to have to leak this, but these settings that I'm going to show, not any of these, these are just your resolution settings. But on the left tab, adjust image settings with preview, you're going to click the middle, use the advanced 3D image settings, and click take me there. What I was trying to say before was that these settings that I'm about to show, I gave these to Tragix, and the same exact day, literally 10 minutes later, he went and won a cash cup. So, you know, I don't want to take credit for it, but Tragix 
posted, he's a tier one pro, and he said these want him to cash cup. So to begin in order, I'm gonna go through all of them. Image sharpening, this is under the global settings, by the way. Image sharpening off, as well as scaling disabled. Click off right there at the top. Ambient occlusion, anastropic filtering, all of these random kind of anti-aliasing features that you really do not want. Turn them all off. I know some of them have like quality and performance options where you might think, hey, performance sounds pretty cool. But no, every last one of them, including background application, max frame rate, anti-aliasing transparency. The first one we're not going to have off is CUDA GPUs, which you want to select the one GPU you have, and it should come up as all. After that, DSR factors off. Low latency mode, I actually have off, but I recommend either putting on on or ultra. You could kind of fool around with it. I've had it on on for a while. I pretty much only turned it off just for showing this video. Max frame rate, you're going to have off. I know you kind of want to put it as high, but just don't do that. Monitor technology. This is kind of weird because a lot of you guys probably don't have this. People say G-Sync is good just because it makes your game really smooth. At the same time, it does add input delay, and I feel like the input delay is just not worth it. Therefore, monitor technology, fixed refresh, we're not using G-Sync. Multi-frame sampled AA, off. OpenGL rendering GPU, just use your main one. Power management mode is actually very important because it works with one of the in-game settings, so put it on prefer maximum performance. That is going to reduce your input delay in Fortnite. After that, preferred refresh rate, put it on highest available. Shader cache, oh look, we have it on. Texture filtering, I believe this is the anastropic sample optimization, turn that on. Negative LOD bias for texture filtering, allow that. Texture filtering quality, put that on high performance. Then the trilinear optimization, turn that on. Threaded optimization, I think it was Adam X who said you could turn this off or just try it both on and off. For me, threaded optimization helped out a lot, so try it both. I think turning it on is better. Triple buffering, we want off. Vertical sync, why do I have it on that? That should be off. Virtual reality, pre-rendered frames, one, and then the other virtual reality, off. Those are basically the best NVIDIA settings. I'll quickly just let you look at them all again in case you missed one. Boom. That is all of them. Oh, actually, one last thing. If you go to change resolution, which I just did, this is where you can adjust your refresh rate on your monitor. So in case when you actually download or install another game ready driver, if your monitor goes to 60 hertz, just go over, select the right res under PC 1920 by 1080 and select your preferred refresh rate. I use 240 hertz, not 360 hertz, just because you cannot get stable 360 FPS in Fortnite. It's a feels bad, man. That's just the way it is, baby. Moving on to the actual Windows 10 and kind of Windows 11 optimizations. I am not currently on Windows 11 just because I've heard mixed opinions on it. But if you did not see what I just did, I typed in graphic settings. You should get a system settings tab. And what you're going to do is actually turn off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I know it does say reduce latency and improve performance, but from what I've seen, it does not make a difference. If anything, it's actually worse for your in-game FPS. On top of that, we have graphics performance preference. This is important because I have Fortnite on high performance. In order to actually do that, you're going to press browse. I don't think you're going to see this first, so you should probably go to your program files. That's where you're going to see all the different kind of games you have. And you're going to go to Epic Games, Fortnite game, binaries, Win64, and then you get the four different applications. Make sure right here you do not click the easy anti-cheat or the battle eye or the launcher. Click Fortnite client Windows 64 dash shipping. You're going to add that right there, even though it's already been added. And for here, you have different options where it says let Windows decide, power saving, high performance. You want high performance, save that bad boy. And boom, those are your Windows graphics settings. Going back to the actual settings of Windows, which I did not pull up yet. Just type in settings. This is what you'll get. We're going to go to the gaming settings, the gaming section. And on the left, you can see there are four different kind of little tabs. Starting 
starting with Xbox Game Bar, make sure you have this off. A lot of people actually do not, and they don't realize it uses a ton of your game's processing power. People like to use it for recording game clips, but just use NVIDIA. You literally have NVIDIA Shadowplay, you have OBS, all these other way better options than Xbox Game Bar. Turn it off, especially if you already use one of the other ones. Additionally, over in game mode, I used to have game mode on, and it does not make a huge difference, at least on my own personal PC, but you can play around with it. I have heard from PC tweakers to turn it off. And then finally, if you want to go back to the other graphic settings, you can see on the right, related settings, graphic settings. You see the little, look how close they are? Yeah. Second to last Windows tweak we're going to do is not that. I want to type up startup apps. We're actually going to use two of them related to apps. The first one is your startup apps. These are anything that is going to run in the background as you play Fortnite that automatically starts. So you can see the only one literally that I have on is Epic Games Launcher. Apparently it's the only one with high impact, even though I think if I turned like one of them on, oh, I guess it doesn't change. They're kind of lying about the no impact because if I had all these on like G-Hub, NZXT Cam, Steam, if all of these were on and updating and running at the same time, my FPS would be shambles. So please turn all of them off. The only one you need really for Fortnite is Epic Games Launcher. But related to startup apps is your normal apps and features. You can see on the left, apps and features. This is basically all the different applications that you have downloaded. And something that I like to do is just uninstall any that I do not use. For example, the Wootility, I have not used that just because I don't use the actual Wooting keyboard. So I'm gonna uninstall it. Get that off my PC. Later, bish! No, but for real, this is going to remove different applications that you do not use. It'll give you way more space for different games or just for actually clipping Fortnite and actually playing it. And I'm trying to see. Imagine I had some like hacks and I got exposed going through all my apps. To end off the window settings though, we are going to go to power. There we go. Power and sleep system settings. As you can see, this is what is going to pop up. So just make sure your screen and sleep is never. You do not want them going to sleep as you play Fortnite. But then in addition to that, when you look on the right, it will say related additional power settings. Click that. Boom, you get this bad boy. This is in the control panel, by the way. And this is usually hidden. You're gonna have to click show additional plans. I actually have the ultimate performance plan, which I did show in a different video. I'm not gonna show how to get it this one because high performance is very similar. Everyone has high performance. What you're gonna do is click on the change plan settings, go to change advanced power settings, you'll get another smaller tab, and under PCI Express, you have link state power management. Make sure that is off, not maximum or moderate power savings. We do not want any power savings at all. Additionally, under processor power management, go to maximum processor state, put it to 100%, and then above all of that, that under wireless adapter settings. Go to power savings mode and make sure the setting is on maximum performance. This is pretty much what the high performance plan is. You can then save the changes and yeah, free FPS. To end off the video, we have the kind of Fortnite settings that are not all Fortnite settings. I'm going to load up the Epic Games Launcher. I'm going to go to my library, and this is where you can see Fortnite is. Yours might look like this, some others look like this. You're just going to want to click on the three little dots next to Fortnite. You're going to go to Options, and over here you have the Fortnite installation options. What I recommend everyone does is uninstall the high resolution textures. So you can see right now, mine are just not there there. It's not checked and it's huge. It's 19 gigabytes. We spent like a minute just removing different startup apps. So why the heck would we want high resolution textures, 20 gigabytes for no reason? All they do is reduce your FPS. To actually uninstall them, all you're going to do is you're going to uncheck it and then press apply. There should be like no download size and it's basically going to take a minute or two. Make sure you do not install them. The way you know if you're installing or uninstalling is it will show the download size. So right now it's 20 gigabytes because it wants me to install them, but because I already do not have them, or if I was going to uninstall it, there's no download size, you press apply, and there you go, high resolution textures are gone. Then the other major setting, this time it's actually in Fortnite, it is going to be to make sure you're on performance mode. Not just performance mode though, but start with performance mode alpha. You guys know the different options are DirectX 12, DirectX 11, I've seen kind of weird 
weird, I guess, tests that were done on Reddit, which showed that DirectX 12 is actually pretty good if you have an AMD GPU. But for most people who do not have high-end PCs who are watching this video, you are going to be best off on performance mode alpha, as well as, over here, low meshes. By this point, you guys know what mobile builds are, or sorry, low meshes. They literally will get you the best FPS, the lowest input delay. Let me look up really quickly. Oh yeah. Oh, 1100 FPS. Oh, it is just so beautiful and it feels so freaking nice. I actually saw a really useful comparison video that I believe Bootyclap KC made. And one of the main points on why low meshes is so good is that there's no animations. So you see when I build, there's just no animations. That is part of why your FPS does not really move around that much when you're on low meshes. It's also why your input delay is so constantly nice and so low. I've literally said it 500 times, your FPS is linked to your actual input delay in game. So the higher and more stable your FPS is, that's gonna lead to your game feeling way smoother. And you get all of that with low meshes. There's just no reason not to be using it. But Jurian, why don't you use it? Well, little Timmy, I was actually thinking about swapping to it. Most pros like Benji and Tayson actually use it now, but I'm still a COD tech creator at heart. And I just don't know if all the little Timmies, like the one asking the question, would actually wanna watch it. Let me know what you guys think. I'm still deciding, but for now, just because I'm a content creator, I'm going to stay on high meshes. For all you guys, though, who are actually competitive players trying to get way better FPS, go into your settings, turn on performance mode, as well as low meshes. Do it for Papa Jarian. Overall guys, that is the video. All of those tips and tricks should help improve your FPS because it did on my own PC. Let me know down below. On top of that, if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Remember, if you want to be featured in these shout outs, just send me a picture of you using my code. Mainly on Twitter, I hate Instagram. Go follow Follow me on Twitter. Otherwise, that is it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.